commentary with the following images includes excerpts from sources listed and credit the publisher or current claimants. For most of the decade of the 1960s, Chrysler Corporation closely followed General Motors and Ford Motor Company in their model policies, model for model. Notable examples include the modified version of the Valiant under the Barracuda nameplate after Ford's introduction of the Mustang, and the muscle cars directed at the growing youth market. When the small car market began to increase in the late 1960s, Chrysler restyled its Dodge Dart and Plymouth Valiant with new body styles, grills, and extended hood. But during their 1970-1971 sales and earnings downturn, Chrysler chose to invest its limited funds in truck development and to shelve its mini-car program, suspending development of a domestic subcompact car to compete with Chevrolet's Vega or Ford's Pinto. Chrysler was severely criticized by both its dealers and stockholders for the lack of a subcompact in its model line. The look is new, the price is now. Dodge Fever. And an optional 440 Magnum V8 just for kids. Dodge Fever. In order to compete in the subcompact market in 1971, Dodge dealers offered the Colt, manufactured by Mitsubishi. Plymouth dealers sold the Cricket, a product of Chrysler Corporation's roots of England, before running into parts problems. Chrysler, in the early 1970s, focused production on compact cars, so that in 1975, these represented 53% of its output compared to 40% two years earlier. It also settled for a more conventional styling approach, strongly patterned after GM models. Chrysler gradually trimmed its line from over 120 models in 1970, to approximately 100 models two years later, to 75 models in 1974. In 1975, they dropped the luxury Imperial name and bowed out of the heavy-duty truck market though consistently seeing an increase in its light truck sales. Chrysler had sharp declines in overall market share, and it was a period of ill-timed decisions about model introductions. For instance, restyled 1971 intermediate models hitting the market when the demand was swinging back to full-sized cars, or the introduction of new full-sized models for 1974 when the market was in the middle of the energy crisis. Chrysler's market share declined from 16% in 1970 to 13.8% in 1976. Only two models in Chrysler's 1975 intermediate line were successful, the luxury Chrysler Cordoba and the Dodge Charger. The success of these two models was greater than Chrysler had expected, and they increased their share of the mid-sized market from 12% to 17% in 1975. 